Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Update, wife is upset I don't trust her, is having second thoughts about the baby. Build trust. TLDR, my wife came home and we spoke. Not sure how I feel. Edit, for people new to me and my situation. Mimi, her friend, used to duck around with us in the beginning of our marriage before she herself got into a relationship. This is why the idea of Mimi and my wife together or them making a sexual gift for me isn't got me all riled up and why Mimi was willing to make the video in the first place. This was mentioned before, but for like the first three years of our marriage sometimes Mimi would be a part of our sex life. We didn't record it or videotape it or anything like that. Just something that happened. Mimi didn't start doing of or any of that until maybe two years ago. I'm not entirely sure. But when people keep messaging me about Mimi and why I'm not more angry at her, it's because I know from the text and conversations between them that my wife misled Mimi and used our previous relationship or intimacy to do it. So with that said, please stop asking me why I don't hate Mimi or think she is the problem. My wife has grown, made her own decisions, and has 100% of the blame and my ire. Also, if your comment isn't support for my path, real ducking advice on the path I've chosen, if it's just anti-reconciliation bias and bullshit, I'm gonna just block you. Like seriously. If you insult me. If you insult her, I'm gonna block and report you. Someone said hey, I don't think it will work and here's why. And it's done in a supportive and constructive way. Cool. But you people know exactly what I'm talking about. There are people here who are here specifically to shit on and discourage anyone trying to reconcile, I aimed for it. So I woke up earlier this morning to my wife, sitting at the foot of the bed. She just sat there. I didn't say anything and I just stared at her for a while. She then told me she was sorry for everything. She looked down and told me she had something to say and she needed me to listen. I cannot tell you with complete accuracy all she said, but I will try my best to paraphrase. None of this is verbatim. She said. I am guilty of committing a heinous betrayal against you and against Mimi, I know that. I know that I used our special bond and relationship with Mimi to manipulate her into going along with something under false pretenses. She admitted at first, she wanted to make the video with Mimi for me. She felt sexy and beautiful for the first time, like she could be one of the women I've drawn. Like the character I created for her. She remembered earlier in our relationship when Mimi was fooling around with us, how much I enjoyed some of the artwork I had made for both of them of our characters doing stuff and wanted to recreate one thing in particular. To be honest, in all of this I forgot. It was so long ago and I was so new at doing NSFW commissions and art. I had deleted a lot of my early work when I was going through my, I hate my art phase, and feeling like I wasn't a real artist, cause I had to accept pornographic commissions to get by. That image I did of Mimi and Amy's characters doing it on live stream was something to entice people to commission me. At the time, it was the best image I had drawn, and it worked. I got quite a few commissions on HF for that. Then a lot more, then a ton more. I had to raise my prices to keep from being overwhelmed. But people still commissioned me. I got better, charged more. Even when I got up to charging 200 per character, people still commissioned me with great frequency. It all started with those images, and that one in particular, but it had been so long. I forgot about it. It wasn't as important to me anymore. She said that at first that was all it was and Mimi was happy to help. But she really enjoyed doing it. Just feeling sexy and important, so she asked Mimi if she could be on cam with her. I said I know. She said I don't. She said, she knew full well at the time, that the first thing would be fine, but being on cam, even in a mask might be detrimental. That she just wanted to know how it felt. That she wanted to have that confidence Mimi had. That she wanted that so bad she lied to Mimi telling her that I was cool with it. 
that she betrayed my and Mimi's trust. She told me she understood that it wasn't just the trust of a normal relationship. Knowing that Mimi and she fooled around and experimented when they were younger, I was never uncomfortable with her alone with Mimi. That was how much I trusted her. She had access to my bank, my passwords, my phone, everything. She knew all my passwords and I never hid anything from her. That was how much I trusted her. Mimi took her at her word. Even when she started to ask to be more involved, Mimi began to have doubts and suspicions and openly began to question her about things, she abused her trust and lied to her about my compliance. She lied to herself saying it was the same as the pornographic commissions I did of our characters. That I've drawn my character, Mimi's, hers, for commissions. With other people's characters. It was just digital characters, it was just online, it wasn't real. She compared what she was doing to that, but knew as she was doing it was flimsy. She apologized and said, I lied, knowing I was lying. Knowing I was making excuses. Knowing you would have a problem. I knew it because I had to hide it. She said she didn't want to stop. She didn't want Mimi to tell her to stop. She didn't want me to tell her to stop. The attention was in her words, intoxicating. It wasn't cheating in her mind. Not really. She had no emotional or physical connection to anyone. She didn't desire anyone else. She just liked the feeling. The knowledge that they would pay money to see her. That she was beautiful enough that people who knew they could never touch her, that she would never reciprocate their lust, that she was simply there to be desired and nothing more would still pay money to see her. She admitted she started doing the private cams on her phone cause it was getting harder to convince Mimi I was cool with everything, and a few times she had to stop Mimi from bringing it up. Our anniversary hadn't come up yet, so she was able to keep Mimi from spilling to me about it under the guise that I would see the stuff on our anniversary. Amy said she knew Mimi had enjoyed the huge boost in viewers and money on her from their collaboration, but was always so weary of them. She believed Mimi knew something was wrong after the second video, and was smart enough to piece it together, but lied to herself. I spoke up for the first time and said, the money, the viewership, and her trust in you didn't blind her, it helped her convince herself of something she knew wasn't true and that's Mimi's sin to bear. Amy then said after the anniversary passed was when things got awkward. Mimi had asked me about my anniversary gift and I was clueless. She had hinted at something that seems obvious now, but at the time confused me. I don't think Amy explained it away, but kind of shushed her. Their little secretive back and forth, non-verbal is what started me snooping. My alarm bells had already been going off because of how secretive she'd gotten with her phone, and how she'd been acting. I told her I already know what she did and I've made peace with it. That version of us is dead and gone. She can't make up for it. We need to see if we can move forward. She says she knows, but she can't move forward without being really honest. I asked her if she slept with anyone then. She said no, looking offended. But then looked down and said she knows I have no reason to believe her, but she did not and would never. She says she had to admit that I am right not to trust her. That she was an awful person. That she is trying to move forward, be a better person, but she doesn't think we can rebuild any trust unless she admits to everything. My heart went cold. I prepared myself to hear the worst of it. The last bit of trickle truth like everyone online said. I wanted to know how bad it was. I wondered if she would abort our baby if it was so terrible that I left her on the spot. If it wasn't ducking someone else, what could it be? She then told me something that brought me up short. I enjoyed it. She said it so softly I didn't hear her the first time. I asked her to repeat herself, and she said it again, but only a little louder. The second time she burst out crying and shouted it, before burying her head in a pillow. I told her that was obvious. No one puts their job, life, marriage, and closest friendship on the line to show their body to strangers if they don't enjoy it. But she screamed no. She shook her head and she said no. I asked if she was talking about the attention. The intoxicated gratification. And she said she did, but that's not what she's talking about. She started ugly crying. 
and I just waited for her to get on with it. Amy then admitted that she enjoyed feeling like she had won over on me. Feeling like she was clever and smart. How she had hid it. How she had got away with it. How she had managed to maneuver around Mimi and me. She said I was always so much smarter than her. So much better than her. I would tell her that she was pretty, that I loved her, and that she was amazing, but always made her feel stupid. Everyone was so much smarter than her, so much more clever. She apologized again and said she wasn't trying to manipulate me or anything. That's not what she meant. That sometimes, when she was gaslighting me, not the word she used, she felt excited, smart, that she could come up with logical arguments and excuses on the fly. That she was selling me and Mimi and she got good at. It gave her confidence at work. It made it easier to bullshit and convince clients. It made it easier to look her co-workers in the eye and instruct them on how to sell. She felt so smart. She felt like she had all the benefits of an affair without actually having to have an affair. She though she was smart and people who ducked around on their husbands were stupid. That they didn't need to duck someone else to get that confidence, that gratification. She had found a loophole and she was exploiting it and made her feel good about herself. She said she felt beautiful, but she also felt smart. She apologized and said, you don't trust me because I enjoyed betraying your trust. I felt good about it. Amy said she thought she was smart and that she was successfully lying to me and Mimi, but the only person she managed to completely fool was herself. I saw through her. Mimi saw through her. She then admitted for the first time that she knew it was over that day when Mimi had a fight in our house. That she suspected Mimi was yelling to get my attention. Something I heard before. That Mimi became impossible to deceive when she found out about the private cam sessions. I told her what Mimi told me. That she had warned her against doing that. Even talking to fans. She nodded and told me that Mimi had been very worried about that and very angry when she found out. Angrier than she was when she confronted her about Amy lying to her or me. The guy, who she referred to as that Cheshire guy, was the last straw. The guy had made similar overtures to Mimi, which is the first I'd heard that. Amy said she didn't know that at first. That Mimi never pointed him out by name, just talked about guys like him. Amy said she felt smarter than those guys. That they would pay her money and she would do whatever the hell she wanted. That they couldn't trick her into anything. She felt like she was in control. She said again she felt clever. She said all the guys offer to duck you for money. You say no, you do what you want and they don't get what they want and pay you anyway. Because you're desirable and they take what they can get. When the guy said he'd pay her 5000, she didn't believe him, so she just told him no again. When he sent it and told her it was proof of his sincerity, she felt smart and superior. Amy said she felt triumphant. That even this amount of money wasn't enough to sway her. That the argument I walked in on her and Mimi was about this. She finally told Mimi and used that as an example of how she could handle it. How this idiot just sent her $5,000 as a gift just to entice her and he failed. She felt superior. She felt better than him. She felt better than all those girls who teased her. She felt better than Sissy, whose husband cheated on her and ran away with another woman, despite her being skinny and pretty. She had me and everything I was, and she didn't appreciate it. She took it for granted. She wanted more, she felt she deserved more. And she felt she could get it at the expense of everyone's trust, because she finally felt smart again. She apologized and cried a while before she started back up. She then said she should have told me, but didn't know how to say it. How to express how I made her feel. That I wasn't doing anything wrong. I asked her what she meant, cause I was confused. She said she had always felt ugly cause she was fat. Those guys thought she was pretty enough to fool around in high school and first year in college, but would never stick around. She would later see them dating skinnier girls. But those girls were stupid and she wasn't. Amy had always felt smart. She had always been a good student. She had always been intelligent, or so she thought. College shattered that illusion. 
Nothing came easy like it did in high school and she wasn't seen as a smart girl anymore, just the fat girl. But she still felt like her mind was her best asset. That she was smarter than most. Then she dated me and I made her realize how unintelligent she was. I asked her if I made her feel stupid. She said yes, every day. All that time. I got angry, not going to lie. I asked her what did I do. She yelled back that it's simply me being me. I always have to be right. I'm always right. That I always know what to do and say. She brought up how incredulous I look when she doesn't know something I thought should be common knowledge. She then yells that they didn't teach Greek mythology or Roman mythology in her high school. They didn't teach us about the Native Americans, or Haiti, or Chinese empires or whatever. She even brought up how I laughed at her when we talked about Joan of Arc and she had spent her entire life thinking Jonah was a girl's name and that historical figure was named Joan of Arc. She said I can be insufferable with it. I told her that I wasn't trying and she said that made it worse. That she can see me trying to dumb myself down. That I pretend not to know stuff. That I act less and that I don't talk to her like I talk to people I respect. She says sometimes I sound like a teacher dealing with a slow student, or a parent talking to their kid. She said she wasn't attractive and now she wasn't smart either. But when she was doing her dirt she felt smart and she felt attractive. She had coveted that feeling. She coveted it enough to put everything at risk, proving that she was stupid. Proving that she was untrustworthy. She told me she wasn't upset because I didn't trust her. She understands that you have to spend way more time fixing something than you took to break it. Amy just thought she was doing better and that she had finally started to quiet those nagging doubts and believe that she could actually forgive herself. That she could fix things. Unfortunately I'm still a little tactless cause I immediately asked if she thought the baby was going to make things better. She stopped for a moment and said, no. Then she said a little. I told her that children complicate things. That no relationship or bond that was broken ever got mended because of a baby. She said she didn't see it like that. That wasn't what she meant. She said that I came alive again. She was scared that the news of the baby would upset me. That I would ask her to abort the baby because now was the worst time for her to be pregnant because I didn't know if I wanted to be with her anymore. But my reaction was completely the opposite of what she had feared. I came alive. I was happy. I was proud. I would tell anyone and everyone I was having a baby. It wasn't the baby that made her feel like we were turning a corner, it was my reaction to it. She said I mopped less. That I wasn't staring off into space looking sad as much. That she'd stop catching me staring at her with my judging eyes, instead I would look at her and look at her belly and smile, where before I would look really disappointed and just look away. She felt like I had made my decision. That I wasn't going to just bolt any second no matter if she was doing right. That I was willing to try to make it work. That even though she had broken my trust, ruined us, and had even stupidly felt good about herself while doing it, I had enough faith to try. She said it was painful to hear that I had no faith in us at all. That I didn't trust her at all. That I was just hoping. She said something I felt was a pretty good analogy. She said it felt like being a lottery ticket, you don't expect to win, but you hope you do. But she felt like the payout for her wasn't worth the price of the ticket, and I had told her as much. I don't know why I said what I said next, but I guess I was thinking about the replies to my last post. The abortion talk really got to me. Most people telling me it's not my choice what she does with her body. I know my body, my choice, in theory. I support it. But it's my child. I told her that abortion is not an option. If she aborted my child I would hate her forever. I would dedicate the rest of my life to making her pay. My child is worth the price of the ticket. She got really quiet and then told me she knew. She never considered aborting the child, not matter what happens between us. She could never do that. I yelled and asked why she said that then. She told me she didn't know. Which made me angry, and I accused her of saying it to manipulate me. I then asked her if her crying was a manipulation. 
Was her leaving to her moms and not seeing me as a manipulations? Does she still feel clever? I admit I started thinking about all the nasty posts and comments I have read here. I was pretty aggressive with a few questions and accusations but she denied them. We talked and she finally said something that I really did believe. She envied other women. Women who desired for more than just being a pretty fat girl whose only value is her self-esteem is low enough that you could probably duck. She envied Mimi and her sister. She envied Danny, who was always so beautiful and perfect. She said she never appreciated that those girls envied her. Amy admitted she'd been reading up on cheating and cheaters and that most think they absolutely need something they lack. That they are willing to risk what they have to get something else or something more, and that she was guilty of that. That she took me and our relationship for granted. My trust and she doesn't deserve to have it, but is selfish enough to still want it. Most cheaters don't realize what they're doing isn't what they want more until they lose what they already have. I told her you don't need to read books to know that's the case most of the time. But then again, most cheaters don't pop up screaming about how cheating was the best thing they could have ever done, look at how well their life turned out. She then took my hand and told me something I remember well, but not verbatim, cause it was the last thing she said. I'm sorry I destroyed our marriage. I'm sorry I destroyed your trust in me. I'm sorry I'm not the woman you deserve and that I never appreciated you like I should have. If your hope is all you're willing to give me then I will take that and be humble. I will appreciate that and build on that. If you should decide now or in the future that I'm not worth the effort, it will hurt me, but I won't hate you for it. Every second you're here with me, giving me a chance I don't deserve is a blessing. She then said, I'm willing to take whatever you're willing to give me. And if that's nothing at all? She looked me dead in the eye and said. Then I will appreciate that too. It wasn't her words. It wasn't her tone or body language that made me want to believe her. Just the look in her eyes. The truth is. I knew something was up from the beginning. I just didn't know what. Amy has a horrible poker face. I honestly believe her. I do, but that's how she feels today and I told her so. This time with a little more tact. I said, that's how you feel today. How will you feel tomorrow, or the day after that? I don't know when she's going to decide it's not worth the effort. She told me that she doesn't know. She has faith that will never happen. I told her I hope it doesn't. She nodded and hugged me. She then cried herself to sleep. I left the room and played Genshin until I decided to write the post. I have mixed feelings about the whole thing and I know this is a lot. But there was a lot. I don't need advice, this is an update, I got good and bad advice in the last message. I'm not swayed, I'm not more trusting and I don't have more faith. I still really hope everything works out. But I'm prepared for it all to crash and burn. But I'm strangely placated, though voices in my head are seeding doubt. That's where we stand now. I'll update others if and when it's relevant, hopefully not all this word vomit you got to sift through this time. Take your time, go to individual counseling and so should she before making any decisions, if you decide to reconcile couples counseling of course. If not then separate and co-parent. I already am. So is she, but her therapist has been on maternity leave for about a month. If people genuinely believe they did something wrong, they will try hard not to repeat the same behavior. If she genuinely feels bad for what she did, she'll try not to do it again. If she only feels bad about the consequences, she'll just try hard not to get caught. For me, I think she's said enough to know which of those things is true, but you'll have to make that decision for yourself, or discover it the hard way. I wish you the best of luck. Since she has made no move to repeat that behavior. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Give me advice, but only the advice I want to hear. I know you're in a rough spot, and it's hard to think straight when you're in that position, trust us, we know, but you should rethink the stance that you know everything. Sorry, I stopped reading. You both need therapy and neither of you should have children until you both are mentally stable. 
Block me if you want, but what you need is more than what the internet strangers on Reddit can provide. Thank you. This is a freaking mess and the only reason he doesn't want negative advice is because he doesn't want to walk away from such a toxic codependency. He'd rather bury his head in the sand and forget it even happened. It's sad, but it's his choice. I just hope he remembers that choices come with consequences. God, what a toxic mess. I'll repeat what I said in the other post. Do not make y'all's trauma your future child's trauma. Figure this crap out now before the kid is born and decide to fully commit as parents together or co-parents together. End the cycle of abuse now and stop being like any other parents who just pass it from one generation to the next. You know I had very good parents who are very much in love with each other, to a sickening degree actually. So not sure what cycle you're talking about. But I'm gonna ask you to not project. What about her? She brought a lot of her own trauma to the relationship and created it much for you. Don't let your trauma become your kid's trauma. Helping and supporting isn't always telling you what you want to hear. You can block me if you really feel like it, I think that's really immature, but whatever makes you feel better, I guess, but this entire thing is nothing but manipulation on her end. Do you not think it's weird she voluntarily told you she's not trying to manipulate you when you didn't even ask? How is that not a giant, bright red flag waving in the sky? Your wife is a toxic, insecure mess who wants validation from men that aren't her husband. She implied she would abort your child during a juvenile meltdown regarding her cheating on her spouse. That is the epitome of immature, toxic, and manipulative. Yet you want to defend her. Reconciliation is only successful 13% of the time, and takes up to 5 years to fully reconcile. I guess you've decided to invest up to 5 years of your life for a 13% chance at happiness with a cheater and a liar. Not great odds, but it's your life you're gambling with, not mine. Not a good choice in my opinion, but you clearly aren't looking for advice, just people to tell you it's okay to stay with an unfaithful liar of a wife. Which is fine, if you would just own it. You're making excuses for her behavior and you'll likely be back. Women that don't have consequences or manipulate their way out of them rarely learn from their mistakes. I'm glad you got to talk and learn more about her reasons, but I agree with you, it doesn't change the future or the past or even the present. It doesn't change your feelings. I can know all day long that setting a fire will burn things. Knowing doesn't unburn. All cheaters cheat because they can. Because they feel the rewards for them are worth it. I don't care about my WH's low self-esteem. I don't care about his family of origin issues. I don't care about the stress in his life. None of that counts for me. In all of that I was a partner and actively working on the partnership. I respected him and myself too much to break the covenant I made. What that means for reconciliation I can't predict. What I can predict is that I prefer my ethics to any level of selfish rewards I could glean from disrespecting myself. I am incapable of continuing a partnership unless he does all he can to be worth partnering. I remember when yelling at me do you think you're a better person than I am? Yes. I am a better person. I hope my WH can become a better man. I hope he works hard to fix himself. If he doesn't, he doesn't and the chips will fall where they fall. Oh, that guy. He lives in another state and from what I know isn't married but lives alone. He's got disposable income and does this all the time. He's a creep. But he is not my problem. If I'm to consider him AP then I would say AP is not my problem. WW is my problem. If he makes himself my problem, then I would handle that. Wow, what is this? Open relationships ruining a stable marriage? Who could have thought? Slash S. Did you ask your wife if she was okay with having Mimi in your sex life? Did you suggest it? I mean, it's awful that she cheated, but you reap what you sow man. I don't think you ever stopped to consider how your wife felt about it all. She might have thought she was being replaced or got uncomfortable being in a sexual relationship with another woman in your marriage. At the end of the day, it looked more like a revenge affair than anything and I really don't feel sorry for either of you. 
If you want to be fully monogamous don't introduce someone else into your bed plain and simple. Even though you don't need advice, I will still give you one because the next conversation could be critical for your future. I applaud your wife for saying what she said. It takes a lot to confess to what she did and that she enjoyed it. But that is not what truly matters now. Because what you said a moment before she confessed that she enjoyed it still counts, it happened, it is in the past now. You both will become parents now so your focus needs to be on the future. Your wife will experience the same or something similar again in the future and now is the time to prepare for that. So what will she do the next time when she feels outsmarted by everyone and ugly? What will she do then? Will she believe you when you tell her that you think that she is attractive or hot? Or can she openly tell you that she needs more than those words from you? Now is the time to learn from your past mistakes. What I would advise you both to do aside from keeping on going to therapy and what to do what I told you in my other post regarding expectations is, that you sit down once a week with the single goal to talk about your marriage and how you feel. Talk about where both of you are with your mind right now, where you struggle and where you improved. Listen to each other and find ways to support each other. You both can do this. I believe in you. I know you haven't asked for advice but the only thing I can say is this is a time to focus on yourself and your mental health, she has been selfish all this time and didn't care about anything else than her feelings. Is time to focus on yourself, maybe pass some time away from her, like a couple of weeks on vacation, away from all this to have time to think and reevaluate all that has happened, then focus on your fatherhood. That was painful to read. Her confession. How are you holding up? Think about deferring your decision by a few weeks, just so the storm of emotions subsides some and gives you a little clarity before you resolve on reconciliation. You don't need to be together to be great parents. If you're still dead set on reconciling, accept that you may never ever trust again. That you will be triggered often and this will definitely hurt her. Tell her to be sure about living the rest of her life in this way and not to decide hastily. She's hormonal and seems to be unwilling to detach from you. Good luck. I didn't know about the image issues, but I knew she had confidence issues about a lot of the mental. She was more verbal about that. I'm not going to trust anyone like I did ever again. Any new partner will have to deal with that. I can just not mention it, but the truth is the truth. I've told her how I felt on this matter. I liked someone else saying trust but verify. Before trust was blind and given. It won't ever be again. Good, sounds like you are moving forward at least on her admitting some of what is going on in her head. Please, again, look up borderline personality disorder. It doesn't just go away by talking, and it sounds like she is in a spot where she would be open to doing hard work to change her destructive thought patterns. I'm hoping for the very best for you and your family. Life is work. Hard work. But the old adage. Nothing worthwhile is easy. If any of my ex-spouses could reflect, process, then put actions to words, such as what you wrote, her realization, her admitting, her communication to you. Just that alone would have spoken volumes to me. Your life. Your wife. Your child your decision. But after reading your post, you got this. Either way, you got this. Take good care. Sounds like you both are in a good place to keep on going towards your goal of a loving and honest marriage. I just want to give both of you an honest heads up about what to expect after the baby is born. Not many books or info on pregnancy and the first five years or so of having a baby put enough stress on the fact that the new mom is going to feel bad. And most moms don't talk about it much either. Unless you ask specifically perhaps. Because a new baby is everything all the books do say. Exciting, frightening, vulnerable, etc. But at some point very soon after the baby's born, maybe two weeks or two months. The new mom feels exhausted, underappreciated, still scared and unsure if she is doing the right thing, in her everyday parenting decisions, tired, unattractive, in need of sleep, and somewhat abandoned. 
After the newness of the baby wears off and it is mostly just you and her and the little one, she is going to still feel all of this and also feel like she's been left alone to keep handling it without complaint, despair, or requesting time off. So please be aware and as a good husband and dad, help her through this and let her know that it's coming. Because women never talk about it much, it leaves new moms feeling like failures because they feel this way and it can give her overwhelming feelings of not measuring up. But I have hope you all are going to be really really good. The journey of a thousand miles begins with but one step. Lao Tzu. This can refer to many things, the formation of the relationship and moving forward, or the growth you will have as you begin in this life. There will be rock that may twist the ankle, and yes there can include death along the journey. I hope you fare well in your journey. Thank you for the update, wishing your family the best in the years to come. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.